Hey guys, Chris Rubens and Greg Hill here, and we're gonna go into an avalanche scenario, but before we get to that, we're gonna talk a little bit about our avalanche tools. So that's our beacon, our probe, and our shovel. One thing that's really essential for all these tools is to have quick, easy access to them. So when you pack your bag, pack it so that you can get them as fast as possible. Mine has a pouch on it where I can get my probe and my shovel out right away. But let's start this conversation off with our beacons. Most of the day you're just wearing your beacon and where you wear it is up to you. Personally, I wear mine in, in my harness on my lowest layer so that I don't ever have to deal with it unless I need it. I got mine in a little pocket here. Uh, I like it right up against my tummy, not down on my leg. Most importantly is it's attached to something. The thing with your beacon is once you've decided where to wear it, you have to make sure you keep all your electronics as far away from it as you can. Your GoPro will interfere with it, your phone will interfere with it, any electronic will interfere with it. So decide where your beacon is and keep all your electronics as far away as possible. So in the morning before we go out, we turn our beacon on to send mode. And what that means is our beacon is transmitting. Beep, beep, beep. And it's sending it out through an antenna. And these new beacons, the digital beacon, it has a three antenna. And so what that is, it's, a, it's sending out a signal vertically and horizontally. And it really makes it a lot easier to be accurate, especially on a deeper burial, when you're trying to do that fine search at the end. Don't chintz out, get a three antenna beacon. So we spend most of the day with these beacons in send, but in the unfortunate scenario of an avalanche, we need to turn these beacons to search. And that then we're looking for the person that's buried in the ground. So we like to use the airplane analogy for this. At the start, we're kind of cruising above the Atlantic Ocean, so we can move pretty fast and just trying to hone in on exactly where that signal is. As we get closer and closer, that's us coming into the runway, and we really want to slow down and be really precise. So keeping your orientation of your beacon is super important here. We don't want to be moving it back and forth. We want to be following those arrows. And when we get down to that fine search, we want that thing right down on the ground as close as possible to the snow. So like Chris said, you're flying fast and on high and then you're coming in. Once you get down here, you go real slow, bring it down. And you just watch those numbers. 0 0.3, 0 0.0, so I'm right over it. But you want to go past the beacon until it gets a little bit higher. So you've got a parameter. So you stop there, go back to your smallest point and go to the side. Make, it, make the number go bigger, block it off. Same thing on the other side. Now I've really identified where the person is and I'm going to mark that. And that is the basic beacon search. All right, so let's chat a little bit about probes. I've got it in my easily accessible pocket in my bag. And it's really important to kind of practice putting these things together. It, it is a little bit harder than you think sometimes. It is kind of like putting a tent pole together. Uh, we really like to suggest a minimum of three meters for your probe. Uh, if your buddy is down there three meters, you definitely want to hit them. I really enjoy these quick release setups. Uh, there's you used to have to in the past, like screw something on, but these just pull them together. Pretty self-explanatory. And you really do want to make sure that they're together quite well before you go for that probe, because if they're not, it's all going to fall apart and that's going to cost you time. So let's go into some probing techniques here. So probing technique is super important. We always want to be going in in the same direction, perpendicular to the slope. And I'm using two hands on my probe. One's just guiding it and one's pushing it down. And so I go down on my first one and if I don't get a probe strike, I'm moving out in a circle. And we get into the cinnamon bun or a square, depending on how you want to look at it. Doesn't really matter. The important part is we're 20 centimeters apart and we're at the same angle that the probe's going in every time. How are we going to know we get a probe strike? The easiest way to tell is a difference in depth. The shovel is pretty essential. And you want it to be a real shovel. You want it to be metal. You want it to have an extendable handle. Because if you're digging for your buddy and he's three meters down, you want something real. Um, there's some that go into this hoe shape. And the hoe shape is good for doing this sort of thing and really kind of sweeping it back. But, you know, these are better for chopping and kind of doing the paddle technique. It really depends on your preference. But the main thing is, is have a real shovel because this is serious stuff. You don't want some little plastic thing that's not gonna help you find your friend. So you've got your big burly shovel and it's time to dig. You're not gonna dig like this like you would if you're digging dirt. The trick is, is you get down, get on your knees, chop the snow up, 
and paddle it behind you. Chop, paddle. Especially as the avalanche debris gets harder and harder, you're really gonna have to chop it, move it behind you, chop it, move it behind you. And then if you've got a partner, Chris can come in. He can, especially with the hoe, makes it easy to sweep it away from me. And when you're the guy in the front, it's gonna be really tiring. And the guy in the back should monitor him and say, hey, it's time to switch. Cause I'm gonna be so stressed, I might not know that I'm just really useless up here. Switch. So that's the basics on how to use these tools. In the next episode, we're gonna go through a full avalanche scenario and we're gonna implement them as they happen. But no matter what, you should take a course from an avalanche professional before heading out into the mountains. If you got any questions, comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below and we'll answer them. And make sure you subscribe to the Solomon YouTube channel and follow us on socials. Have a great day and we'll see you on the slopes.